Hi, I'm Ben Allen. I'm Jaron Hamblin. And I'm Tyler Roder. Today we're going to be presenting about the history and future of automated control systems. Let's get started. All right, so the definition of a control system um, is defined as a system of devices that manages, commands, directs, or regulates the behavior of other devices or systems to achieve a desired result. A control system achieves this through control loops, which are a process that is designed to maintain a process process variable at a desired set point. Um, most aspects of our day-to-day -day basis and lives are affected by control systems. Um, a few of them we'll talk about later um, include air conditioner, refrigerator, bathroom toilet tank, automatic iron, and there's so many more. Um, control systems have played a major role in the development of uh, modern technology and civilizations. Um, some features of control systems, automated control systems, uh, is a clear mathematical relationship between the input and output of a system. Um, it can be measured in linear or nonlinear um, proportionality, um, meaning the uh, input and output work together or they don't work together. Um, it can also be automatic or manual. Um, automatic control systems, um, the input and output are uh, completely dependent on one another and the manual control systems, they're completely independent on one another. Um, some requirements of a good control system are, uh, it needs a good accuracy and error detectors can be used to, redirect, to um, improve the accuracy. Um, sensitivity, uh, good control systems should be sensitive to inputs. Um, good control systems should reduce the noise for better performance because um, that can improve the accuracy and reduce background, um, any background noise or problems that they have. The input and output of a control system, control system should be similar to avoid being unstable. Uh, a larger bandwidth should be used um, for stronger control systems. Um, and good control systems need to have fast speeds in order to have good bandwidth and to run easier. And then they should have a small number of oscillations. Okay, so there are two main types of control system, the closed loop and the open loop. An open loop control system <clears throat> is a system that runs independent of outside forces. Um, for example, a toaster oven is gonna toast bread regardless of the temperature of that bread or how burnt it gets. Uh, the next type of control system is an open loop control system, or sorry, closed loop control system. And closed loop systems are run by receiving feedback from outside, um, an outside force and adjusting themselves to accommodate those conditions. For example, a thermostat is going to measure the temperature of a room and send a signal to the AC unit in order to control the temperature of that room. <clears throat> A couple examples of open loop uh, systems are hair dryers, uh, because you have to manually turn on a hair dryer in order for it to function. And as soon as you take your finger off that hair dryer, it's gonna turn off. A non-automatic light switch, because the light will turn on independent of whether it's dark or light outside. You have to control that. Closed dryers, runs on time, not um, it's not going to continuously dry your clothes even if they're still wet. The dryer will turn off even if uh, it's still wet. So a manual toilet, that's something that you have to manually flush. So a couple of advantages and disadvantages. Well, I guess the advantage to a open loop system is that they're very simple to make and there's not a, a whole lot of complicated engineering involved. And they work well with human monitoring. So a person can control one and they can be fairly reliable. But if there's not somebody in control of that system, then they can be very unreliable. Um, so that's the disadvantage. So a couple examples of closed loop systems are an AC system, because it self-regulates the temperature. A car cooling system, which will automatically kick in if your engine is overheating automated light switches which sense outside light and adjust themselves accordingly, water heaters, traffic lights, 
uh, which sense cars and then can adjust uh, the flow of traffic depending on how, how, um, how much traffic is going through the sensors and glucose monitors, which regulate insulin in the body. An advantage to a closed loop system is that they are totally automated. Um, and the disadvantage of that is that they're very complicated to make and maintain. So the first examples of control systems showed up in, um, they've been around for thousands of years, since the early Egyptians. Um, but one of the first control systems ever recorded and uh, that we can see an example of it, it was during the 1500s when mercury was used um, as an expansive metal which expanded during temperature changes and could help people regulate temperatures in a room. For example, um, there was a man named James Sorry, James Watts is the next example. There was another man who used mercury in order to, when, when the temperature rose too high, it would expand and turn a lever to his furnace in order to regulate, in, in order to direct airflow into that furnace and increase the overall temperature. Um, and then other examples have been known throughout time. All right, so with the past and future of automated control systems, we can also look into Future. And the first thing we got to ask is, is automation a good thing? There's some major positives, such as increasing efficiency, in, um, improving safety, but then there's the fact that it's going to replace a lot of people's jobs. So will automation, um, automated control systems replace blue collar jobs? Yes, it will, but it's going to be very gradual. Currently, um, for instance, drones can take a picture of someone's roof and calculate the slope of all the hip or slope of the roof, the length of all the hips and everything, and that can be done entirely by a drone. So with automation, repetitive tasks are gonna be the first ones that are gonna be replaced by automated control systems. Jobs that require more critical thinking aren't going to be replaced by automated control systems. So that leads to the question, what jobs are automated control systems less likely to replace? And jobs that require creativity, social skills, adaptability, critical thinking, and management. So for instance, general uh, robots will never replace general contractors or engineers just because they don't have the ability to think across so many different aspects of a job and think with um, critical thinking skills. So this also leads to the importance of lifelong learning for people who are in our current position today as college students. We need to be able to adapt and learn because 20, 30 years from now, the job market is going to be a lot different than it is now. There's going to be technologies, systems, and processes that we haven't learned about that we're going to um, need to be able to adapt to and learn so that we can um, become valuable in the marketplace and know how to use these automated control systems. And how will automated control systems change everyday life? There's self-driving cars. Interestingly, yesterday Waymo, which is uh, under the Alphabet, which is Google the company umbrella, they started testing fully driverless rides in San Francisco. And so this technology is fast approaching. There's delivering packages to your homes with drones. We'll be able to have more leisure time since everything's more efficient. There could be robots in hospitals, self-flying planes, really the opportunities are endless. All right, so then how does this, how does automated control systems apply to geomatics and surveying? Um, with the introduction of systems and in the future, um, we're gonna see less of a need to have people out working in the field because we'll have machines to do that. Um, we'll still need to have people out in the system because like work we've been doing in class, you can't have a robot operate at a total station um, because it requires critical thinking 
um, and judgment that is to advance for robots to do on their own. Um, so one example, but one example that uh, automated control systems have impacted the world of surveying um, is the introduction of GPS um, has reduced our need to be out in the field to do all those measurements because um, for a lot of the time we already have those measurements um, on GPS. So in s using stakes and surveying, we don't have to really do that too much anymore because we have GPS and all that information is already um, been discovered. And then these are our sources. Thank you guys for listening. We hope you guys could uh, take away some valuable information about control systems. And see you next time.